Cause you call me by my name The love you give me I just can't deny Yeah Hello guys and welcome back to another video on my channel, another episode, a brand new podcast episode. I am your host, Howa Mansare, but if you're new here, please subscribe, like, comment, share with someone who you think would benefit from this or maybe save it if you would benefit from listening to it more often or at another time of your convenience. But if you're returning, hi OG, hi bestie. Um, it's just so nice to have people who like return because I know there's some people who return and you know they actually like catch up on videos as well like maybe they haven't watched a video or two and they catch up on some later so I really appreciate it if you're one of those people like seriously I appreciate it if you're um a returner you know that I got a new microphone so this is not a pink microphone I'm used to using my pink one which is this one however there's nothing wrong with it it's just that i don't have the same phone so like the adapter that connects to my phone is not the same because of my new phone i just recently got an iphone 16 um like the little colorful ones which is really pretty and cute that's why i have a new microphone if you're wondering However, very, very important disclaimer, if you are trying to skip to the teaching and you do want to get right to the teaching, I will always, always, always attach the timestamps in the description box. Um, so you guys can just skip right to where we start talking about the main topic of the episode. And if you haven't already, definitely follow me on Instagram. And it's at all the with two E's underscore above. And also follow me on TikTok with the same at name. Yeah, we're going to get right into today's video. And I definitely want to go ahead and pray. Um, as you guys know, I definitely missed a week. So I was supposed to post this episode basically last week but obviously because of my phone I changed my phone I didn't have any storage left on my last phone I think I mentioned that so yeah that was just a whole adjustment trying to change my phone trying to make sure that I had like everything back to normal on my new phone if that makes sense so yeah we're gonna go we're just gonna go ahead and get right into it but I definitely wanted to let y'all know I feel like sometimes when you take a break you become back a little rusty I feel like sometimes I'm a little rusty when I come back after like a break from like vlogging or a break from like this you know because I was doing it for like a good month that was pretty well that was a pretty good run we're still in season one by the way so I am wanting to update you guys on how I'm doing these. I want to do them by seasons. So I think a season will have like seven episodes and then I'll take like a little break, come back with another season. Y'all let me know how long you want seasons to be. So this is obviously season one of my podcast. Let me know if you want it to be a little longer, a little shorter. What's your tea? You know, let me know. Anyways. Um, let's just go ahead and pray and get right into today's episode. Come Holy Spirit in a special way that they and they only could feel, hear, experience, see you come in a special way. God, Holy Spirit, encounter whoever's listening to this in a way that only they know is from you and just show them lord that your presence is in the room father god i just thank you for another wonderful day thank you for another wonderful week and for just taking us into such such a beautiful time as this time of holidays time of celebration time of family and friends and love and joy and just time of transition time of ending and beginning a new year time of reflection lord i just thank you for that privilege to reflect at the end of the year 
because I had the opportunity, I had the chance, and you gave me the life and the breath to be here another November. I thank you, Lord, for all the ups and downs because I know they are all working for my good and your good. And I just know, God, that there is something new and expectant waiting for us in this new year. There is something more that you want us to discover about you. You are always, always, always showing yourself in new ways. You are always wanting to reveal yourself in everything, in every situation. So God, I'm just asking that you would help us to re to discover you in this new year, discover you in this new season, to help us to see your hand in our lives, to help us to understand your mind better, help us to know that you love us, that you care for us, and that we are enough as we are. I'm thankful for you, God. Have your dear, dear way in our lives, Lord. Have your honest way in our lives. I thank you. I glorify and magnify your holy name. Guide us in this teaching, Holy Spirit, as we converse. May you be in everything and every word. And speak to us, Lord. May we listen to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to get right into it because I had some time, obviously, to think over the past two weeks about even what I wanted to talk about for this episode and I have a word thank you Jesus I have a word and it's stuck and since then I have been kind of feeling more of why God gave me that word or understanding why the origin of why God gave me that word and it's because I'm a feeler I'm a feeler I'm a woman Whatever men feel to you, I'm not trying to say men don't feel, but women have an, a different array and a different range of emotions sometimes or origin of emotions sometimes. And I'm definitely going to testify of that. I am a feeler. I feel things deeply and I am great also at hiding my feelings not intentionally the word basically back to my point is about feelings and as i was brushing my teeth on saturday i just remember i don't know what i thought about actually that gave me this word but i think i was just thinking about life and reflecting about how much <laughs> things god has done and how much things he has taken away and how many things I feel like, oh, why did I need to go through that? And he said, your feelings have thoughts. Your feelings also have thoughts. And I was like, whoa. Mm. I think I remember now. So the reason why I thought about feelings and that he told me this while I was thinking while I was brushing my teeth is because I think he was trying, like I was trying to wrap my head around like how sometimes I feel a certain way about something and like I get a word back. Like I don't pray. So I can feel something right. And I don't pray about it. I don't even like talk about it. I don't actualize it in my reality. I just feel something and automatically God sends a response to that feeling. And it's like, how did you send a response to my feeling? I didn't even think it really. I just kind of felt it. And he's like, because your feelings have thoughts. You feel anxious. And that's a thought to me. Like, I, I, I see that as a thought. Like, I see that that anxiety is you talking to me whoa i'm like whoa god that's kind of crazy and it's kind of cool and you know there's a verse that's like uh as a man thinketh so is he like as he thinks whatever he thinks of whatever he ruminates on whatever he meditates on that is what he will become and it's like so god kind of was telling me like your feelings too 
is what you will become as well because they are your thoughts. They are what you're thinking as well. You feel something and you think like, oh, but I didn't like think about that. Like I just kind of felt that way. You feel offended, but you don't, you know, think about it too much, but you felt offended. That is already a thought. That's like a little thought that comes up to God. He's clocking it. And I just want us to like, understand what that would also mean in our walks with God if we view our feelings that we have as also him as also a thought to him because let's be honest your feelings you can't really control like sometimes you don't even want to feel a certain way or feel a certain thing it just kind of happens like your body is just reacting to the world and you feel things your thoughts you can kind of control them a little more you can kind of let's just say like your thoughts you can generally control them i know some instances it's like sometimes it's harder to do but generally you can right your feelings not so much like let's be honest if i feel offended sometimes i don't even want to feel offended but someone said something and i'm like what did you mean by that like i might not say it but i'm like what did you mean by that or you might not want to feel a crush you might not want to feel have feelings for someone you might not want to have even love for someone but you can't help it right it's like it's not something you can just turn off so if that is so strong in human nature to feel something like automatically and God also registered and spoke to me that feelings also have thoughts that means that what does that mean like I want to I want to go into that what does that mean then how can we use that because then that's a different area and scope of communication with God that you can use so for example I think of discernment as a big 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 key indicator here like if i have an innate feeling in a certain situation i think that's also like how people can say like gut feelings and stuff like that me and a friend were talking about this pretty recently i don't know when but it was pretty recently and we were just talking about like how people can say like oh i have a gut feeling about something and it's really just like the holy spirit or it's really just your discernment towards that situation like that's just modern a modern day term for discernment for you know the holy spirit for our counselor which is the holy spirit um that is a gut feeling you know that is a gen z 2024 way of saying the holy spirit just told me something and that gut feeling god talking to you he's giving you a feeling in order for you to know something so how can we use our feelings guys how can we use our feelings to understand god more and talk to god more and how to also use our feelings to help ourselves like because that's really god also talking to us you know feelings i think are the indicator that god is is listening also like god is recording god is documenting what is happening at this point especially when you have a strong feeling but really big feelings because i lately have been in a season where i have been dealing with really big feelings guys like just gonna be honest and i think whenever you have really really big feelings god is recording it god is using it um i think feelings are sometimes looked at as a lot it's looked at as like something you just want to pass like i just want this to pass especially if it's a bad feeling i just want this to pass i just want to get to the point where i know the reasoning for why that happened or get to the point where i know why i am in this season or i just want this to pass but where i think maturity is when we can get to the point where we are like what exactly is god trying to say because this feeling is so big he has to be using it like this has to be used in some way it doesn't look like it but i had to take a little tiny break but
let's just get right into it. So a lot of the a lot of the fruit of the spirit as well that God also instructs instructs us to have are feelings. It also are feelings. To be at peace in the midst of chaos, to feel joy in the midst of deep despair or sadness, to feel like that joy is not circumstantial. Peace is not circumstantial. Um, at least not the one that God is requiring from us when he talks about fruit of the spirit in Galatians. It's a deep knowing, a deep innate knowing and a deep innate response he wants us to have from life and towards life. And so if he wants us to be innately at peace in the midst of chaos, innately joyous in the midst of despair and sadness, innately loving in the midst of hate, or to have gentleness. I was going into, I was reading some of the chapters here. So I go to Samson and I read about Samson because Samson, I feel he also had battles with his feelings. He also had battles with trying to control them. But David also had issues with that. But they can unravel into worse things when the enemy finds a loophole into them. And he starts driving the engine into a different way. Because that's what he does. He uses what God wants for good. He uses our good desires. He uses our curiosity, which God instills in us. He uses everything God instills in us, even our feelings. And he makes it warped. He warps it. He twists it. And he twists it. And he makes it into something now that is going to kill us. Just bring destruction overall. I believe that God wants us to have that awareness that feelings are strong for a reason and feelings are not to be suppressed you know i think the main thing also that i'm getting is your feelings should be like confronted vocalized because the more you suppress them the more the enemy warps it in your mind he will warp it in a way that you will fulfill it in the most in the worst way that you could so I want to say, I want to read David and Bathsheba. I want to read that. That is 2 Samuel 11, 2. So it says, One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, She is Bathsheba, the daughter of Iliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him and he slept with her. Now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanness. Then she went back home. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. So David sent this word to Job. Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Job sent him to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked him how Job was, how the soldiers were, and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Job and sent it with Uriah. In it, he wrote, put Uriah out in front where the fighting is fiercest. Then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. I want to stop there. And I want us to realize that nothing was mentioned in the Bible about how David felt in this entire thing. All we saw were his thoughts. All we saw was what he was planning to do, was what he was planning to do with Uriah after he knew that he slept with his wife Bathsheba and they can and she got pregnant. It didn't say David felt ashamed. David felt David felt sad. David felt hurt. David felt mad. It didn't say David felt embarrassed. It just said that. It just explained his thoughts. It explained everything that he was going through. However, I want us to notice these things are happening. Like the reason why he's even acting out in this way to go bring Uriah and telling him to go back to his house is because he's feeling embarrassed. He's feeling uh, conviction. He's feeling 
all these things and also conviction is a feeling too but he's feeling all these things however we are just seeing the feelings expressed as a thought and as actions i am happy that we have real stories of people who are imperfect because this story always gets me because i'm just like this is the man that is one of the most famous men in the bible and he was a man of god he was a man after god's heart but he did that you know there's always underlying the feelings are always the last to be approached but they should be the first to be approached first address how do i feel in this situation then address if i take this feeling to god what thought am i also taking with this feeling am i taking the thought of i am not good enough am i taking the thought that that always happens to me am i taking the thought of i can never win am i taking the thought of this will finally make my life perfect like what am i taking the thoughts what thought am i taking to god when i bring this feeling to him um and when i go there first i can then at least know that i am in the right presence with this when you seclude yourself with your feelings which are also thoughts the enemy has now a foothold he has now a door he has now a place to invite himself in because now he's like you have no lordship over this area so therefore it's mine i've talked about this in numerous episodes i feel not even numerous episodes but in numerous um in other parts of different episodes previously if you want to go back and watch i talked about this but the enemy will definitely claim anything that isn't god so anything that god does not have lordship over anything that god does not have a ruling or a say over he gets automatically it's not like oh if god is not lord over my life i am no that that's not how it is you are you being lord of your life is satan using you you are not really like as um in control as you think you are you're either controlled by two things god or satan you cannot control yourself and satan only gets authority from god to to do what he needs to do but if he if you are not showing that god is the lord of my life in this area satan is in it and it's just so crazy to think about it that way but he is and if he isn't yet he will find it and he will be in it that's just how it is and one thing that i've noticed is that satan has a lot of work to do basically he's trying to find a quick way in and a quick way out a quick way to come in kill steal destroy and leave so he can do it again it's crazy y'all but the more i like i even was sitting here and i my mind started drifting into a feeling and a feeling into a thought and i caught myself i was like look at you doing it <laughs> it's so second nature to us like we don't even realize it but it always starts with the feeling you didn't just have this thought you felt away from an experience from something that happened from something you've witnessed or were in or that had happened to you and that experience invokes a feeling and that feeling now is giving you a thought because think about it thoughts are what forms our lives right so of course it'll be second nature for that feeling to now be moved into a thought because it won't be useful if it was just a feeling everything is used god uses everything right but like there's a verse everything is used for god's glory right and proverbs 16 4 says that the lord has made everything for its purpose even the wicked for the day of trouble so god uses 
everything for its purpose. Then we have to ask, what is the purpose of our feelings if it does not invoke a thought? Because then the thought is what creates us. If you feel something, I think the number one thing to do is bring it to God. Bring that thing to God. Bring that feeling to God. Bring that desire to God. And God gives us these desires. Um, and especially when there's a strong desire for something, we all have strong desires for different things. So that's how we know that God is implementing these things um, very intentionally into each and every one of us because we all don't just have strong desires for the same things, right? We have strong desires for different things. I think it's it's good to dive deeper into why you feel the things you feel and not just suppress it or um, or just run a generic catch-all phrase of this will pass. No, it will pass. If it's bad, it will pass. I know you, we want the good to stay and the bad to pass. But truthfully, all things will pass, good and bad. But before they pass, why is it in your reality right now? What is it trying to teach you? Depending on how strong it is, what may God actually want its purpose to be? It might not even be just a season thing. You might have just found your purpose based off of what you felt. Catch it. I'm going to say it again. You might have just found your purpose based off of what you felt. Okay. I really do hope that you guys learned a lot from this episode. I think that I did. I did go into parts that I didn't even understand myself in this episode. I think I also want to do a little more of like reading into this, like part of what God is trying to teach me about feelings. Yeah. I hope that this helped somebody. I hope that this helped you. And I just hope that God continuously reveals this week that you are not alone and that you are enough. You are doing the best that you can. And you are walking your walk the way only you can walk it. Um, have faith. The Lord is pleased with faith. So above all else, seek to have faith in him. Seek to have faith even when it doesn't look good or even when the situation is really, really, really rough. Seek to do that. Um, and also reach out to somebody, if you can, who you think is doing a good job in that. And tell them that you see them. Reach out to someone who you think is just, you like, yeah, she's always on top of her, on top of her game. Reach out to them and tell them you see them. Tell them you want to pray for them if God is calling you to do that. But I really highly suggest that you do that because it is those kinds of people who could be struggling the most and you would never know. Okay. So just reach out to someone this week, little challenge. If you would like to do with me, I am going to try to do that this week as well. And just tell them that you see them. You see that they are doing really good. Yeah. I really do hope that you guys enjoy this podcast episode. I love you guys so much. Have a beautiful week and come back and rewatch as many times as you want because this is the episode, the podcast, the place for you. Have a wonderful week and I will catch you in the next episode. Bye. Someone told me I'm someone. Know that I'm someone.